वेलकम बैक व्यूवर्स टू आर एजुकेशनल चैनल एस एन एस अचीवमेंट जोन इन दिस सेकेंड वीडियो ऑफ आर वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन द टॉपिक एर्गोनॉमिक्स ऑफ फार्म मशीनरी एंड इम्प्लीमेंट्स द सेकेंड सीरीज वीडियो इज ऑन द असेसमेंट ऑफ द एनर्जी एक्सपेंडिचर लेट्स गेट इन टू आर वीडियो सो द एनर्जी लिब्रेशन इन ह्यूमन बॉडी इज टेकन इन टू कॉन्टेक्सट इन दिस video lecture the energy liberation primary involves the metabolic process that produces the energy uh, needed for daily activities the primary source of energy for the human body is derived from the breakdown of the macronutrients such as the proteins carbohydrates fats through processes like the glycolysis or the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation in the field of ergonomics the study of energy metabolism is crucial for assessing the physiological demands of work tasks designing work stations and optimizing the job performance so the process crucial for energy liberation in our human body are glycolysis atp protection the cellular respiration the citric acid cycle also known as the krupp cycle and the oxidative phosphorylation assessing energy expenditure is a critical aspect of ergonomics as it helps to evaluate the physical demands placed on individuals during various activities or works that are carried out in the form of tasks the assessments of energy expenditure in ergonomics involves measuring the amount of energy expended by the human body while performing any kind of work there are two methods of measuring this heat expenditure one is a direct calorimetry the second was the indirect calorimetry first of all we have to know the basic units of energy first unit is a calorie one calorie expenses or expresses the quantity of heat necessary to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree celsius kilo calorie is like one calorie expresses the quantity of heat necessary required to of 1 kilogram that is 1 liter of water by 1 degree celsius so now this direct calorimetry is directly measuring the energy expenditure in the form of a human calorimeter it uses a air tight chamber a person lives or works in the chamber for an extended period of time it also it changes in water temperature relate directly to an individual's energy metabolism this is the directly measured form of energy expenditure and so called as direct calorimetry so you can see a uh, uh, image or a pictorial representation of the direct calorimetry here uh, so, um, a person is actually kept out into a closed chamber water flows through the copper coils and a heat exchanger is placed and a thermometer is also placed in order to measure the uh, deviation in the temperature the oxygen supply is given for the person to live the air is let in and the air is let out and the carbon uh, dioxide absorber is kept for the cooling uh, cooling circuit so this way of measuring the energy assessment is called as direct calorimetry okay now in direct calorimeter the air flow uh, air flow calorimeter temperature change in air that flows through the insulated space into the air's mass and specific heat and the water flow calorimeter has the change in temperature flowing through the coils embedded environmentally self contained unit suit and you have gradient layer calorimetry which measures the heat flowing from the subject to a sheet of insulating materials with piping and cooler water on outside and when it comes to the storage calorimetry subject sits in an unknown mass of water at a constant temperature changes in water temperature can be measured and now the second type is indirect calorimetry in which the energy expenditure measures of oxygen uptake and carbon dioxide production using two types one is closed circuit spirometry the other is open circuit spirometry so in this uh video we have video lecture series we have we are going through like uh, what are the energy methods that are uh, actually used like uh, how the directly calorimetry method or how the indirectly calorimetry method are being used in order to get the energy assessment and in indirectly closed circuit subject breathes uh, Uh, 100% oxygen from a pre-filled container in, and a canister of soda lime absorbs the carbon dioxide and exhales that that is the CO2 absorber an open circuit subject inhales ambient air and indirectly affects energy metabolism 
so this is a type of uh, pictorial representation which has been given for a closed or open circuit spirometry in which you can see the record in a graph sheet you can see the pulley which is attached to the oxygen chamber and the soda line which acts as an co2 observer and the person is breathing through his uh, a nozzle actually and uh, also in uh, open circuit uh, psychrometry you have these bags attached a spirometer is small and is carried in a pack air volume is metered sample is collected to measure concentration of the gases and computerized instrumentation is also available in which air flows measured for volume gas analyzers measure the concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide this is a computerized instrumentation graphs which have been drawn electronic interface to the computer is sent to the flow meter breathing valve and the sampling chamber for expired air and electronic o2 analyzer and electronic co2 analyzer are in turn connected to the electronic interface of the computer so a few graphs are given for your per user thank you for watching our video lecture series hope to see you seen in the soon in the third lecture series thank you